Hampstead, Tenerife, Fortitude Valley area is probably about 35. We are very close to the central business district now. On our left, when we turn this corner, you'll see a, um, at the frame of a gasometer. And during the 1970s, we had a bit of a dark period in our history when uh, we had no gasometer is still there because the developer wasn't allowed to demolish it because it was part of our history. All this area was industrialized. We had, um, we had a sugar refinery. We had a powerhouse, we had uh, tramways, um, and um, well, we had wool stores, uh, we had a pineapple factory, we had uh, um, a sawmill. So it all happened from where we are now to the river or in that area. And so that gasometer really is symbolic of all of that industrial activity. So all of that went in the early 1990s and it all went out to the mouth of the river. Thank goodness, because we used to have big semi-trailers down here through Ann Street. I could, couldn't imagine what it would be like now. It's bad enough without them. street on the left is called James Street and that has a theatre and several restaurants. Um, it's a very popular spot and a few very um, upmarket hotels as well. We, do we have anyone from Melbourne on board? No one? Okay. Well, there's a bit of a competition, I think, between Melbourne and Brisbane because Melbourne's got a lot, lot of very interesting laneways, so we didn't want them getting ahead of us. So we had a plan a few years back to uh, jazz up our laneways. So one of those on the left here is Wing Lane. We've got quite a good music scene here in Brisbane. And another one which was developed in the 1860s on the right here is Bakery Lane with that tiny little opening there. It was an apothecary. So on the left, a beautiful old hotel, the Empire Hotel, designed by Richard Gailey, who was quite prolific in the uh, late 1800s. And on our right is uh, Chinatown Mall. Um, that's actually not the main Chinatown Mall. It's out at Sunnybank, another suburb. On our left is um, All Hallows Girls School, and that was established by the Sisters of Mercy in 1860. On the right, you'll notice that there's a whole lot of um, apartments, and uh, those apartments really are sitting on land which was designated to have a cathedral. But one story is that that money went back to Rome to be blessed and didn't come back, so the Catholic Church sold it off. So we'll go left here. All good. is relatively new called a Howard Smith Wards and Petri Brothers and uh, the coat of arms on the front of the building says Advance Australia Fair so um, oh, um, we can't understand why because 1901 was when we actually had our federation. These days the University of Queensland leases the building and uh, they hold many conferences and concerts and the like um, in that building and has pretty good views because it sits right beside the river. As you can see, the only thing that's constant around here is change. And we're coming in now to the, um, uh, what I call the Golden Triangle because this is where we've got our stock exchange and a whole lot of international um, 
offices, uh, offices of international companies, I should say. So down here on the right, you have got a lovely old Horton Bay fig tree. That tree probably is more than a hundred years old. And the reason that it thrives is its roots go down into a creek called Wheat Creek. And that Wheat Creek actually goes under our city hall. And in 2010, we had to spend a lot of money to underpin the foundations of city hall, simply because they built the city hall on a swampy, uh, banks of a creek. So on our left here, this Eagle Street Pier area, um, this area is about to be demolished, sadly, um, as you can see, and another building is going to take its place. So just if, if, as we um, as we go around the corner on the left here, we've got the uh, what used to be the premises of a shipping company, 1888. Malden House and there is a little bronze plaque on the corner column 11 and 1974 but unfortunately the, the barricade for this construction site um, it, it blocks those um, bronze plaques. So yeah we're going to go left into Edward Street and uh, drive along the City Botanic Gardens now. This area um, during the 2011 floods we had little boats on uh, on the river on the on the street I should say. So Edward Street in our early days was a pretty swampy, mosquito infested, uh, uh, downtrodden area where we had a lot of industry. We had foundries, um, we had shipbuilding, and we had navy um, because even though we federated Australian states in 1901 each state had their own navy. So the hotel down here, which was, it's the Stanford Plaza, it was built in the premises of the old naval officers, four-star hotel. It was totally inundated in um, 2011, so they which were initially established as market gardens for the convicts. And then we had a, um, an English curator, Walter Hill, and he experimented with a whole lot of tropical plants such as sugarcane, pineapples, bananas, mangoes and because uh, the British knew nothing about those sorts of um, plants and uh, as in addition to that um, it is from these gardens that we sent these uh, plant stock for the macadamia nut which we used to call the Queensland nut um, and all those macadamia uh, nut plantations uh, that you've seen, um, the, the seeds for those trees came from right here. So up here on our right is a lovely old building. It always reminds me of Raffles in Singapore. Um, this building was designed by the colonial architect F.D.G. Stanley and it was to house the, uh, Brisbane, the Queensland Club. And the Queensland Club is a gentleman's only club to this day, so our female Premier of State cannot be a member, which is a bit of a problem. Um, but that is that building there on the right is where many um, people who needed to do business with the government would stay and still do. And on about 11 o'clock is Old Parliament House. Old Parliament House. Um, it was built in a couple of stages. This you're side. about to drive past. And uh, two of those are six-star hotels. Two of them are residential towers, which are a sellout. And uh, then we've got this curved building here, which is the casino. And they've just put in a link they are called the Skywalk, so we'll be like Gardens by the Sea in Singapore. But we've kept all of the heritage buildings, such as this Mansions, 1889, designed by Addison. And but that uh, building was built in 18, uh, 1889, and they say the gargoyles on the top are symbolic of the uh, fat cat politicians who built it. And on the left here, Paris Terraces, built in 1866, not quite so elaborate 
but the developer I'm sure bit off more than he could chew there because it needed a lot of TLC but this is the casino here that's starting to take shape right beside the old government printing office which was built in 1859 because once we had uh, legislation being um, printed we had to have somewhere being passed I should say we had to have somewhere to print it family so this is a four-star hotel on our left here the Treasury Hotel run by the casino and Queens Park behind it has a statue of Queen Victoria we were actually going to be called Cook's Land after James Cook the Explorer however in deference to Queen Victoria we were called um, Queensland instead overlooking in the uh, Commonwealth of Australia and Governor Lamington um, it's a bit of a story and I'll tell you on the way out to um, Mount Cusa so we remember him in a few places in our city this is the Queen Street Mall here and uh, it was closed off to make main shopping precinct of Brisbane if you look to the left you'll see Redcliffe Place and the, um, the premises of our Brisbane City Council local government. So we're building a tunnel on the left here to accommodate the Brisbane Metro which will be integrated with our bus. The new, on the left is the new W Hotel. Down here on the left we have a building um, that houses a, an oil and gas company called Santos and if you look at the facade of the building you'll notice that it's all tractor blades and uh, that's called confluence and it's meant to signify the ups and downs of getting entangled in the law. So if you, as we come past the law courts, look hard right and you'll see a wall full of eyes and that wall full of eyes is by a Japanese artist, Kasawa. Um, she's a very well-known artist and it's meant to say the eyes of the law are on you. So we're coming into yet another area where massive construction is taking place. And this is the Roma Street station. It's always been a transport interchange. Previously, it's been train and bus and still is. Um, but we're going to add the metro to it very soon. So that's the Roma Street construction site. is the one that's been around for a long time and we've got one based in the northern suburbs now called the Dolphins and they've had a win. Their very first match was a win. That all takes place in the stadium that we're about to drive past called Suncorp Stadium but in fact um, Suncorp Stadium's proper name is the, the uh, Lang Park and it takes its original name from Dunmore Lang who was buried just here on the left. Um, he was that Scottish uh, Presbyterian minister who um, brought out those three immigrants. But uh, Lang Park is a, um, is, is a very well-oiled machine. They can get 50,000 people in and out of there. Milton Road 
and this is one of the major arterial roads out out to the west and you'll see some examples of our um, iconic Queensland architecture here so see if you can spot a little wooden house with a pyramid shaped roof and a balcony with a curved roof um, we call it a bullnose roof and those houses time so it just became four X's didn't it um, so yeah we have been brewing since the 1870s um, a family by the name of Castle Main set that up they came from Melbourne or near Melbourne anyway um, and they actually brew on wooden barrels there and they sell it at the Breakfast Creek Hotel it's been flooded a few times too just quietly everyone was very worried about the damage to the brewery so you can see the flags flying at the brewery there that um, the green and blue one with the white headdress that's the that's the flag for the Torres Strait Islands and the one in the middle is the Aboriginal one and the one on the left is the Queensland flag So we're heading up to the Mount Kutha lookout and when I woke up this morning I thought oh it's going to be raining but um, we've been lucky so far so keep your eyes, keep your fingers crossed that it's going to be fine. No. So you can see Mount Kutha through the front windscreen right now. Um, see the television towers because they broadcast television from Mount Kutha. It's, we call it mountain, Mount Kutha, but it's just a mountain. Um, it's bushland reserve and we're very lucky to have such a, a big area of bushland reserve uh, set aside for the people of Brisbane, just a mere seven kilometres from the central business district. And so there we have a lot of bush tracks. Um, hike up and down, they ride their bikes up and down, um, it is only 287 metres above sea level and we do have some waterfalls on one side, sacred site of the Aborigines and during the war um, it was where we stored ammunition um, and we did discover a bit of gold there. We've got enough time at the Gallery of Modern Art and um, at Art Gallery. There's there's a whole complex of um, galleries where we uh, stop, and uh, you can catch a get a cup of coffee there um, because you can spread yourself out amongst. I think there's one, two, three. There's four, five coffee shops in that complex and I'll explain what they are so if um, I suggest that if you're really hanging out for a cup of coffee that you hold on um, because it will be much quicker Mount Kutha are pretty slow so with a bit of luck we will see um, uh, the mountain the uh, sand islands offshore
cemetery and uh, unless your family bought a plot ages ago, I'm sorry but you can't be buried there. Kutha and Kutha is an Aboriginal word which means wild honey but on our way we're on a Sir Samuel Griffith drive and Sir Samuel Griffith, Samuel Griffith was a politician who um, was involved in uh, the negotiations for the Australian Constitution but immediately on our left we have the uh, Mount Kutha Botanic Gardens and in there we've got very huge botanic gardens and uh, we have a planetarium where we study the uh, stars of the southern skies. It's named after the governor, Sir Thomas Brisbane, because he was very interested in astronomy. And we've got a couple of lakes, we've got a herbarium, we've got a tropical dome, uh, a Japanese garden, we've got a bunya nut forest, a eucalypt forest. Um, it, it's massive. So there's one of the kamikaze bicycle riders. It's almost a rite of passage, I think, if you're a long distance cyclist, that you ride up Mount Kusa.
about talking frog. lava um, of the volcano remains and the surrounds have eroded over time. Um, no. So um, these botanic gardens on our right, I did mention that there are bunyanut forests. So bunyanut is very, very significant in Aboriginal culture. Um, the Aboriginals, particularly the coast, during harvest time, which is around about March, and they would organise their marriages, they would have their corroborees, and they would have all of their festive activities around the um, harvest of the bunyanut. A bunyanut's really large, it's about the size of a football, and then they tear it apart and they roasted the, the individual segments of the bunyanut, but if one hit you on the head, you could probably suffer from concussion. So on our left here, uh, the Tuong Cemetery once again, and on the right, the Botanic Gardens, some of which we, um, we actually took part of the Botanic Gardens in order to construct a tunnel to the airport from here, and I'm sure that the people in the western suburbs were quite happy to see that tunnel um, Built because it's saving them an enormous amount of time when they commute to the airport from here. So what we're about to do, you can't do in a car because this is a bus only lane and we're going to have yet another look at some of our unique Queensland architecture, somebody with a bit of money. So we're going through the suburb of Tawong very soon up these uh, eucalyptus trees here are magnificent. They're pretty old, I'd say. Um, 
just up here on the right is a good example. The roof isn't quite as curved as what they normally are. Um, that's that one there. Um, that's a working man's cottage. But number 10 up here on the right, uh, this is called Warrawee. And this is definitely built by people who had some money, built in the 1880s. And you'll notice a very elegant um, staircase up the front, coming in from two directions. They tell me that that is um, to do with the women when they dismounted the horses. Um, they brought the horse up to that platform and then they, um, then they climbed off the horse. So this suburb here is called Tawong and Tawong is an Aboriginal word and it's because there's a bird here, um, the curlew, and it has a call that is it's very eerie. It goes like this, Tawong, Tawong, and that's why this suburb is called Tawong. But Tawong is actually um, adjacent to the University of Queensland and the University of Queensland sits on a beautiful tract of land along the Brisbane River, which was donated to them by a philanthropic uh, Irish family called the Main family. And there's a whole story that goes with that family. And I would... railway station in there and a shopping centre and uh, if you had a railway station in the 1870s well you needed to have a pub nearby and so as we turn the corner you'll see the Royal Exchange Hotel and uh, it's a heritage listed hotel and uh, you'll, it is a great watering hole for the university students so universities back in full swing again of the Australian Broadcasting Commission, this one that says Monarch, um, but that building was abandoned some time ago because they had a very high incidence of breast cancer and they could not explain it. On the left here, what used to be the Tuong Library, and it's hexagonal in shape, designed by a local Brisbane City Council architect who's won several awards, Birrily. Then around the corner here on the left, the iconic Regatta Hotel, and it's named Regatta because we had rowing regattas on the river just here. And this um, is a Richard Gailey Hotel, you can tell by the Victorian filigree, and um, it was built in the late 1800s. And one of the mothers of one of our uh, actresses, um, the mother's name was Mel Thornton, she handcuffed herself to the bar in the Regatta Hotel in the late 1960s because in those days women could not, by law, drink at a public bar and she believed that should change. On the left here is a lovely old house called Moorlands which was built by the Main family and they were the ones who donated the land to the University of Queensland. You can just see it now actually, the first um, it's got a lovely turret, needs a bit of work on it, but it was also designed by Richard Gailey. Across the river here, we have the suburb of West End, and uh, West End was where a lot of our Italian and Greek migrants settled once they came after World War II, and then we had another um, uh, draft of the Vietnamese who came after the Vietnam War. These days West End is quite high density, lots of apartments being built because we're low here in Brisbane 
that you uh, that you will have to go up, not out. Now we're going to do a stop off at the art gallery, and as I mentioned, there's lots of little cafes in the art gallery. You cannot take a backpack. You can take a handbag you cannot take a backpack into the art galleries so I suggest if you've got a backpack you leave it on the bus okay because Neil might probably will have to do a few circuits in order to um, to come back and get us so once everyone's gathered together and I've got 32 people I'll ring Neil and we'll go ready to go out to the airport No, again, there'll be no... Okay. Right, so um, Neil, Neil will be shutting down the coach when he, um, after he drops us off, so there'll be no air conditioning in the bus, okay? Now, when we drop you, if you, um, if you go to the right, you can go through the back entrance of the Queensland Art Gallery, and it's worth going through. All of these have fantastic gift shops and they all have little cafes. Um, but for the art galleries, um, you cannot take a backpack in there. And um, there's a cloakroom though. You can leave the backpacks in the cloakroom. Turn left that you're heading towards the cafe. The museum has an excellent, um, uh, <coughs> excellent gift shop. The museum has a, um, has a coffee shop upstairs on the concourse. The State Library has an open air um, cafe. That's the first one that you'll see from where you are dropped off. Um, and the Gallery of Modern Art, once you disembark the coach, you turn left. Um, and you, a bit of a walk and you're at the Gallery of Modern Art. So we've got um, permanent collections, an Australian and an international art collection, um, and the current um, GOMA, Gallery of Modern Art, which is the first building on the left, built in 2006. Um, it actually has <coughs> an, uh, an exhibition called AIR. This is the Kurilpa Bridge here. Um, Kurilpa is an Aboriginal word that means water rat. So there's a, um, a riverside uh, cafe along the banks of the river on the other side of, on the river side of the art gallery, um, and then the, the state library, um, their coffee shop um, is. We we will walk past it as we walk towards the river. The gallery of Montmartre has a very good um, gift shop as well. Please make sure, everybody, that you are back because we only get one go at this. Um, this is a, a council bus stop. I hope you enjoyed yourselves there. We have a lovely complex. All of these buildings here were designed by Robin Gibson and uh, they were finished in 1986, I think it was. This is going to be the domestic airport and the second drop-off is going to be the International Airport, okay? So the domestic one will come first. Those of you who have got long layovers, um, there is a, um, a Skygate shuttle bus. It uh, is a free bus and it goes between the domestic and the International Airport and a factory outlet shopping centre. Um, it's every 30 minutes and uh, you, there is a visitor information desk and, and just and make sure that you allow a couple of hours so that Skygate bus is, um, is free and, uh, and there are luggage lockers at the shopping centre and I believe there are luggage lockers at the International Airport as well. Uh, so that's a, a good way to be out. There's a supermarket, a chemist, factory outlet shops at DFO, so you can spend a bit of time there. So this um, pier 
is our one backpacker area. We've already come around here and this terrace here is called Petrie Terrace and that's after that Scottish family of builders. And we're going to pretend that we're footballers now because when we have a big football game, we drive the footballers. Are we going to go left, aren't we? We're not. Oh, Neil's just trying to trick me. <laughs> Um, for the football stadium and there's a hotel down there called Gambaro's and just recently they had mud crab races there. So these are the old um, army barracks here, Victoria barracks and that would be heritage listed. There's a bit of a museum in there. So you'll see some great examples of terrace houses along here because this, this area here is um, very, very old. west of Brisbane and they've done some amazing research um, and developed some vaccines who are a number of women I'm sure um, are very happy about including one for um, you know, survival cancer. So on the right we have um, Victoria Park which is um, being refashioned at the moment and two of our um, private schools boys and girls grammar, cost you in the vicinity of $30,000 to send your kids there, each year that is. So you can see the Clive Berghofer uh, Medical Research Centre there.
So our first stop is the domestic airport and uh, once your luggage, once you've claimed your luggage, um, what I suggest you do, there are lifts up onto the overhead concourse and you go over to the um, Pontus Virgin Rex um, terminals and there is a visitor information um, in the arrivals area downstairs where the luggage claim is if you need some help. So those of you who are going to the domestic, to the international terminal, those to the international terminal, please stay on the coach. Those of you who are getting off here, please make sure you've got your hand luggage with you, backpacks, iPads, um, all the souvenirs that you've just bought, don't forget them. Have a good look because we won't be checking until we're at the international terminal and then it could be too late. So you can see the concourse here, 